Um, okay, so back to what we were talking about. We were talking about uh, specific um, wireless applications, and in particular, uh, the cellular telephone system. So today we're going to look at uh, some specific, uh, an example of a specific uh, protocol for uh, cellular communication. And in particular, we're going to look at GSM. So it started out um, seeing a uh, group special for, for mobile or something like that. It, 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 was, it was a French acronym uh, so, uh, because it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a, a French standard. Uh, but later on they realized, well, to get uh, global adoption, we're probably going to have to call this something in English. So they reformatted it to GSM, meaning global system. system for mobile communication. I don't know why they just left off the seat, but uh, there you go. Okay, it's the most widely used by a, by a long shot. It's the most widely used voice cellular standard. cellular standard that is adopted basically uh, in every inhabited area of the world. So the, uh, the, uh, the competition to GSM is IS95, which is a CDMA-based standard, uh, which is generally only used in the Americas and in Asia. I'm actually not sure if it's used at all in Europe. Okay. Um, So the radio interface we're going to do two things here. We're going to talk first about the radio interface. In other words, um, how do devices communicate using GSM? We'll have to look in some detail at the protocol. Uh, and then we'll look at the architecture of the GSM system. So you get both an idea of how um, uh, how how a uh, how a protocol is set up and how the system is actually set up in terms of the hardware. So the radio interface is based on both FDMA and TDMA. In other words, we divide the available bandwidth both down into FDMA chunks, and then we subdivide those FDMA chunks by TDMA. Um, frequencies used. There are two principal bands, but there are several other bands that are not used very much. The two principal bands are GSM 900 uh, which works from 890 to 915 megahertz and from 935 to 960 megahertz. Very specific reason why there are two bands here. Uh, the other uh, major band is called GSM 1800, and that runs from 1710 to 1785 megahertz and 1805 to 1880 megahertz. These are the European frequencies, the USA frequencies. I think we're 
Duplexing basically means uh, a duplex channel is one of which an uplink and downlink exist. Um, so all telephone systems are full duplex. means that at any given time there is a full uplink and a full downlink simultaneously communicating between the two stations. Um, the other kind of duplexing is called half duplex. What's the difference there? Okay. One way. So it's it's bidirectional but only one way can be used at a time. So that's like a that's like a walkie talkie push to talk kind of thing. Telephone is is, is always full duplex. Um, so GSM uses frequency division duplexing, FDD. In other words, um, uh, the uplink and downlink <coughs> are separated in frequency. kind of duplexing? So if one's in frequency, what might the other one be? Time and what happens there? Yeah, like half the time is uplink and the other half the time is downlink. But in this case what we do is we basically, uh, this is the FDMA side. Uh, I'll describe this in a second, but what we do is we split, uh, we split each of these bands into 200 kilohertz chunks. 200 kilohertz FDMA chunks. Uh, so these, those channels are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, blah, blah. In GSM 900, there are 124 such channels on both the, on both the uplink and the downlink. And basically, if you get channel 5 on the uplink, you also get channel 5 on the downlink. So over here, Is um, these uh, these groups are separated in two blocks. Um, the uplink is the lower set of frequencies. duplexing works. So I said earlier that it's both FDMA and TDMA, so how exactly does that work? So how do we divide the channel up? So I said uh, FDMA and TDMA. So let's do the FDMA part first. 